for the frog right so now we'll be talking about the process uh, the differential sequential processes for development and the first thing is the fertilization the fertilization process is the most important because as this process will ultimately lead to the generation of uh, those zygote the first cell diploid cell to a number of chromosome containing cell once the zygote is produced then that zygote will slowly divide and divide to produce blastula then gastrula uh, then the other stuff so see the first stage of fertilization the fertilization even the basics are very easy where we have two different cells we have a large cell larger cell which we called as an egg egg usually uh, egg and which is produced by the female right and then what we have then we have sperm cell sperm cell which contains a flagella so both of them egg as well as sperm contains n number of chromosomes in the nucleus sperm is the cell which migrates which moves and finally in go and interact with the egg cell and donates its nucleus inside the egg cell egg remains as it is egg holds on to the nucleus coming from the sperm the nucleus coming from the sperm is called as a sperm pronucleus and the nucleus that is present in egg is called egg pronucleus so after the sperm donates the nucleus into the egg then both of the nucleus will fuse the n number of nuclear content chromosome content will fuse to produce a 2n number of content and the egg cell slowly becomes slightly larger and then it produces what we call as a zygote whenever the 2n number of chromosome is made after the fertilization we call it a zygote and then the zygote will undergo cell differentiation division and differentiation to finally make them die so here the first step is a contact between the sperm and the egg cell and that we can see here in this picture this is the egg cell you see a lot of things lot of receptors are out there uh, for the reception of the sperm because sperm has a specific signaling molecule and the egg surface has specific receptor for that then the second is the contact between the sperm and egg plasma membrane and when there is a contact between sperm and egg plasma membrane then the nucleus slowly start to insert itself into the egg inside the egg, egg cytosol and then remember sperm uh, does not donate any cytosol whatever cytosol that is present in the zygote came from the egg sperm only donate is its nucleus so this is the process of fertilization see at the very beginning binding of sperm to a specific region which we call the different cases in case of mammals we call it a zona pellucida so see this is the process the sperm has a specific structure if you look at the sperm structure it will look something like this for example and kind of and here we have specific things because what i've drawn the structure because this is the nucleus and this is the specific regions so if i if i uh, designate this different regions this is the flagella remember with the help of flagella sperm can swim sperm can sense the presence of chemical contents as well as toxic materials uh, so the movement of sperm uh, based on the chemotaxis and this part is called the collar region of the sperm the collar region of the sperm contains mitochondria because sperm needs energy a lot of energy is required for the movement of sperm and finally reach the egg right so here the sperm move by uh, rotating its flagella and by finding the chemical gradient it's it's uh, it is observing but the energy is derived by the atp hydrolysis and the atp is provided by the mitochondria it's produced in mitochondria and this is the body of sperm where, which contains a nucleus sperm pronucleus and at the top in front of that it has a structure called acrosome 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 is a content which is filled with uh, vesicles containing enzymes digestive enzymes those enzymes can digest the vitelline membrane of a egg because egg has a membrane multi layer content where is a cell membrane first a cell membrane then a vitelline membrane outside 
then it has a jelly like coat outside so jelly like coat is for the prevention that can be easily destroyed when the sperm take entry but the second important thing is to break the vitelline membrane prior to the development and release of the nucleus inside the egg cytosol and for doing that it needs to break it down and for breaking it down it requires those enzymes that are present in the acrosome right so acrosome contains digestive enzymes to see binding of the sperm to the zona pellucida occurs after that the acrosome reaction takes place acrosome reaction means acrosome slowly secretes some of the materials outside and it is going to degrade uh, all of these other debris and all those vital line membranes and all this stuff from here as a result of that the sperm is in direct contact and it can fuse uh, its membrane with the membrane of egg and then the cytosol of sperm and egg can mix uh, I mean, I mean, is in contact, and in that condition only the egg contents uh, are provided. The egg content, uh, the the sperm content, that is the sperm nucleus, sperm pronucleus, is provided inside uh, the cytosol of the egg. So these are the sequential images that are given here. Remember, this thing never happens in multiple chromosomes. You know, uh, multiple eggs. Uh, one sperm only can fertilize one egg and that is a process very tightly regulated because the egg cell does not want more than one sperm to, to fertilize it, right? Those sperms are produced in huge quantity. Most of the sperms lost in the battle, only one sperm win and that sperm will ultimately fuse its nucleus with the nucleus of the egg to produce a zygote. Sometimes two sperms can fertilize an egg but that's a different case. A very rare case most of the time uh, it is not allowed and we call this blockage as a polyspermy so see this is a process an example in sea arching that we can see that the process of interaction between sperm as well as egg is due to the interaction between ligand receptor binding where the receptor that is present on the surface of egg is called the binding receptor and the chemical molecules that will bind uh, that will help the sperm to bind with the membrane of uh, of uh, egg it's called the binding molecule so binding molecule is on the top of the sperm uh, cell and binding receptor present on the surface of egg with the help of this binding molecule and receptor they interact and the sperm is fused with the egg now this this region which we call a vitelline layer is very equivalent to the layer of zona pellucida that we see in case of mammals because in case of mammals we don't see that vitelline layer instead we see that zona pellucida but in either way there are interactive molecules there are ligand receptor binding that helps to stabilize the sperm in direct contact with the egg once the sperm is stabilized onto the surface of egg then sperm start to release this acrosomal content which we call as acrosomal reaction and then whether it is a zona pellucida or a vitelline layer sperm take entry the nucleus of sperm can take entry inside the egg this is a process again denoted for the sea urchin so see this is the vitelline envelope in between jelly and in the inside the egg membrane so with the help acrosome it will bind and acrosome process means you know when the sperm is in close contact with the egg outer layer or egg jelly like layer whatever it is in that case you see there are some acting filaments arranged there at the top of the head of the sperm which start to arrange itself and push this acrosomic vesicles forward this is the, called the acrosomal process once so it becomes very sharping it is becomes very pointy at the at the top where all those vesicles start to be very close enough at the beginning and then in, when it is in contact with the with the membrane then these acrosomal materials are released so all the membranes that is present on the surface of egg slowly start to degrade and the nucleus for uh, from the uh, sperm can take entry to the egg actually sperm head is very small it is see the cytoplasm to nucleus ratio is not very good because the nucleus is big for the sperm compared with the cytosolic content this is another case where you see the sperm eggshell content triggers the acrosome reaction and this is an example for the mammals, right? Because in mammals, you don't have that binding and binding receptor. Instead, we have a Z, ZP3 receptor or ZP3 receptor, whatever you can say, ZP3 receptor. 
Sperms have those ZP3 receptors and here we are having those molecules in the zona pellucida or ZP3, ZP2 and ZP1. These are the carbohydrate molecules, uh, the glycan molecules that are present onto the surface of egg cell for mammals. ZP3, ZP2, ZPA, they interact with themselves to form a chain-like substances. But here for the binding with the ZP, the ZP3 usually presents on the outer side. So the sperm contains ZP3 receptor onto the surface. With the help of this ZP3 receptor that is present in the sperm surface, sperm interacts with the egg ZP3 region and then sperm can fuse its membrane with the egg membrane and the nucleus of the sperm can be inserted inside. Okay. So once the sperm is in contact with the egg here with the ZP3 receptor, the ZP3 receptor slowly start to bind and all the other ZP2 receptors slowly start to degrade due to the secretion of acrosomal enzymes. But remember ZP3 does not degrade very much, it remains as it is. ZP2 and ZP1 contents are degraded due to the acrosomal enzymes as well as some region of the ZP3 content including the membrane uh, of uh, which we call the zona pellucida which is a membrane for the egg slowly start to degrade so that the nucleus from sperm can take entry. This is in case of mouse where you see again acrosome is present so same case every time in contact with zona pellucida uh, these acrosomal contents are mediated they slowly start to degrade zona pellucida and then the sperm heads slowly start to move inside and whenever they are in contact with egg membrane and, and the contents of acrosome slowly start to degrade the egg membrane then the nucleus the pronucleus is driven inside it is donated inside the egg cell cytosol. So whenever we are talking about uh, fertilization, the thing we should not escape is polyspermy. There is always a chance of polyspermy. Why? There is one egg, there are multiple sperms. So there is a chance that more than one sperm can fertilize an egg. So that is called a polyspermy. That is multiple. Poly means many sperm can fertilize one egg. And that is not tolerable. That is not what development works okay so we have to prevent uh, multiple sperm to fertilize one egg because it's found that uh, this this type of thing that multi sperm prevent uh, fertilizing an egg leads to a uh, malfunctioning uh, individual and ultimately it is lethal because it will ultimately kill the embryo it will not be differentiated into the organism so it is not wanted if a sperm only fertilize one one sperm fertilize one egg it will generate into a normal individual so it's always very important to block polyspermy and to block polyspermy there are several different approaches and the fertilization process is extensively studied in sea urchin because in in, Drosop, uh, in in this whole process of developmental biology there are different phases like fertilization blastulation gastrulation and the organization with different phases morphogenesis each of those uh, phases are studied in a different specific type of cells okay specific type of organisms which we take as a say um, as our our organism as our uh, what we can call it uh, default organism say like drosophila like sea archie like uh, sea elegans and all this so these are the organisms like the extensively study of uh, fertilization studied in sea urchin while the morphogenesis is better studied using drosophila. So these are the things a neural development studied better using sea, uh, sea elegans. So these are the model organism that we take for the study. So here blocking of polyspermy for sea urchin study we see there are two different ways a polyspermy can be blocked. First is called the fast block or transient block. Transient block means the block will stay for a while only, which prevents the sperm fusion to the egg. The second block is called the slow block or permanent block. That is the removal of any other bound sperm that is present uh, to the embryo, uh, that, is, that is present in the surface of egg. So here you see the first uh, block, that is the fast block, uh, say this occurs in one to three seconds after the fertilization 
and can last up to one minute and this is nothing but a huge sodium influx to the cell <clears throat> this is the egg cell and upon the fertilization event say one sperm properly attached to the egg surface it delivers its nucleus inside once the pronucleus once the sperm pronucleus is inside the egg we know that fertilization is complete one sperm has done that fertilization properly so we don't want any other fertilization event any other sperm to we want to prevent <coughs> we want to prevent the fertilization of that egg by any other sperm for that reason the fast block works when a sodium ion a huge content of sodium ion was taken inside so it's called the sodium influx 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 means the sodium concentration inside the egg will start to rise and they take a lot of sodium ions from outside you know in sea urchin as they present in the oceanic environment sodium is very common outside in the environment so it will take the sodium ion drag it inside sodium influx blocks uh, the sperm to fuse with the egg anymore so no sperm can fuse now there are say multiple sperm fuse somehow earlier and one sperm donates this nucleus so any other sperm if they are bound with this uh, egg in that case we need to release those sperm out break them out to the environment so that is called the slow block it occurs 20 to 60 seconds uh, duration time and this type of block is permanent after the slow block is established then no any other sperm can interact with the egg and can fertilize the egg so for the slow block the idea is the internal cell signaling process inside the egg where you see the signaling process goes on like the phospholipase c phospholipase c is a membrane bound uh, signaling molecules that is present and upon activation it is broken down into two components one is diacylglycerol or DAG another one is I in situ triphosphate ISP that ISP uh, released outside and diacylglycerol remain attached to the membrane so this ISP finally interact and uh, with the with the endoplasmic reticulum that are present in the egg cell because you know endoplasmic reticulum is present <coughs> and endoplasmic reticulum has certain type of you know uh, receptors onto the surface of it so while that INSP3 the inositol triphosphate 3 bind or bound with those receptors those are calcium receptors and they are open they are calcium channels right channels through which calcium can pass uh, in and out of the endoplasmic reticulum once that binding of INSP occurs there that channel opens and calcium slowly start to come up or come out from the ER to the cytosol so as a lot of calcium start to insert uh, insert itself in the cytosol from ER huge calcium concentration start to build there and as a result of that the slow block occurs right and what it does actually this huge cal calcium concentrations also help certain granules that are present in the egg <coughs> cell membrane and close to the cell membrane we call them cortical granules those cortical granules contain certain type of chemical factors and also some enzymes which again blocks the polyspermy and also which will interact with the cell membrane and contain and coat the membrane in a hard form which will be the egg membrane the hard egg membrane so that thing will be produced by this cortical granule fusion and that is mediated also by the huge calcium concentration in the cytosol of the egg and also the diacylglycerol that remain on the membrane which activates another protein or protein kinase C that protein kinase C helps in exporting protons from the cytosol of the egg to outside and as a result it increases the pH inside and increased pH inside helps in the protein synthesis and that protein synthesis will lead to the signaling that fertilization occurred properly polysperm is properly prevented and after that cell division should work a lot of cell division will will be done and morula stage will be produced so the question is how do we know that uh, the uh, polysperm actually prevented the idea that we take sodium ion and also increasing content of calcium ion uh, the idea exact idea i forgot to mention there 
that sodium influx blocks the polyspermy calcium influx also blocks the polyspermy the idea behind it is that sodium ion as well as calcium ion they are positively charged ions they slowly change the membrane potential because membrane potential plays a vital role for the fertilization event for the fertilization event to occur properly there should be a standard membrane potential present throughout the membrane of the egg for the sperm to fuse with the egg but now due to the sodium influx as well as the increased content of calcium ion inside the cell that membrane potential is disrupted the membrane voltage slowly changes as a result of that that changed voltage will prevent the sperm to fuse with the egg and deliver its nucleus so see here normally there is a resting potential of minus 70 millivolt that is present throughout the cell membrane of the egg but once the sperm is added once one sperm is added and fertilization is done by one sperm then rapidly after that sodium intake as well as calcium uptake there uh, as a result of those features that resting potential increases up to see 0 to 50 millivolt so as a result of that <clears throat> At this lower voltage content, where is the resting potential of 70 minus 70 millivolt, sperm can fuse with the egg. But once the membrane potential rises to plus 50, plus 20 to plus 50, uh, sperm can't fuse with the egg anymore. So the polyspermy is prevented. So see here for the slow block also and the uh, and the mature block. The slow block means the permanent block. Uh, for this block, cortical granules plays a vital role, which is poised for release. So see there are kind of 15,000 15, cortical granules there are present in the CR chain and that contains the enzyme that clip the X binding receptor and any attached sperm. So remember <coughs> in case of CR chain in the surface of the egg there are receptors called binding receptors and there are sperms on the top of the sperms on the head of the sperms there are molecules called binding with the help of that binding the sperm will interact with the binding receptor with the egg and then fuse but here due to the fusion of the cortical granules the cortical granule fusion releases a certain enzyme which will block those surface binding receptors so blocking all the binding receptors uh, will not allow any other sperm to bind and all the sperm will fall off okay as well as uh, this same thing changes the vital line envelope or alter the vital line envelope uh, for example in case of mammals it is a zona pellucid alteration that thing is also done it's also helped to stabilize the membrane and create a hard coat around the membrane because now the cell will need a lot of cell division no fertilization is required anymore <clears throat> see in case of uh, the mammals uh, we see again the sperm have zp3 receptors and we see the process that zp3 receptor in the zona pellucida there are three receptors zp3 zp2 and zp1 Upon interaction with the sperm, ZP2 and 1 are degraded, ZP3 however remains and then it is dragged inside. The same thing is there, ZP3 remains there and then ZP which is present here is a modified ZP3 and this modified ZP3 is required for, uh, for preventing any further interaction of a sperm with the Excel surface. So see this is a, a realistic image, the real image that we see using the fluorescent dye a wave of increased calcium can be visualized uh, inside the egg cell uh, in case of sperm entry so see this is a condition where the sperm entry takes place and after the sperm entry is done then slowly from the endoplasmic reticulum you know where the endoplasmic reticulum is present we see a lot of calcium slowly start to come out you see this is the region where it slowly start to come out and slowly as it is coming out it is transferring itself and distributing itself throughout the cell uh, for the cortical granules to fuse properly okay <clears throat>